Let's talk justice. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another player review here on Blazers Uprise. If you've missed any previous player reviews that I've done, there is a playlist link at the top of the description box below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to hit that red subscribe button, turn that thing gray, and leave a like on this video as it really does help me out. With that being said, uh, let's talk about Justice. Justice Winslow came over to Portland in a trade deadline deal. He came along with Keon Johnson, Eric Bledsoe, and a second round pick that I can't remember for Robert Covington and Norman Powell. It was a frustrating trade, as I said in the previous player review, for me and for a lot of Blazer fans to get back that sort of return for Rocco and Norm, but uh, Justice Winslow had some good moments in a Blazer uniform, including his play over that four-game winning streak right before the trade deadline. Now, since Justice Winslow was not on the team before the season, there were no statistical goals for him or no player preview video clips. We'll get into players that I have have some of those for. There was just a lot of roster turnover this year, so those player preview videos didn't really go as planned. Anyway, when the Blazers traded for Justice Winslow, I wasn't super high on his acquisition. He's been a guy who's been injured so far during his career, has struggled to stay healthy. When he was healthy, he was a guy that struggled to shoot the ball, could play some defense, could pass, but wasn't an efficient scorer, and it was really hard to fit him in next to star players. With that being said, let's take a look at his stats and we're going to start off with his career stats. We're doing this because I want to compare his career stats to his time in Portland. His minutes between his career stats and his time with Portland is pretty much identical, so you don't have to worry about that. In his career, he averaged 8.4 points per game, 5.1 rebounds, and 2.5 assists, shooting 45% from 2, 31.5% from 3, with a true shooting percentage under 48%, which absolutely is not good. Now let's take a look at his time in Portland, where he had a scoring uptick, he had a rebounding uptick, and he had a little bit of a passing uptick there as well, so per game stats look a little little bit more impressive but his efficiency wasn't more impressive he was a little better from two 46.8 percent but he was even worse from three 27 percent and his true shooting percentage was even worse 46.5 percent so these stats paint a picture of Justice Winslow coming to Portland, making some things happen in terms of passing the ball, rebounding, scoring the ball a little bit. But in terms of efficiency, he has not been an efficient player, and that did not change during his tenure in Portland. But let's look at some positives from Justice Winslow's playing time here this season. The first positive is his fit in Chauncey Billups' system. He fit into what Chauncey wanted to do pretty seamlessly, and Chauncey was finally able to to seemingly implement what he wanted to implement with the roster turnover, with bringing in a Josh Hart, with bringing in a Justice Winslow. Billups self-admittedly tried to bring the roster along slowly and not make too drastic of a change to start the season, and that obviously did not go so well. So it was nice and refreshing to see players that played the style of basketball that we expected from Chauncey and that Chauncey seemingly wants. The second positive for Justice Winslow was his defense. He's always been known as a good defensive player and we saw him defend a, a key number of guys and do it pretty well during that four game winning streak especially of course Justice Winslow ended up missing time later in the year for maybe tanking purposes so it's not a huge sample but we all know he can defend that's not any surprise and that's probably his best attribute at this point the third positive was his passing he's always been known as a smart passer he's not somebody that's going to run the offense but he'll make the right pass in the the flow of an offense. He'll keep the ball moving. He's not going to isolate much. He can make the right pass off short rolls. He can catch the ball off a cut and immediately kick it back out if need be. And his passing was very impressive this season. It's a refreshing sight to see a forward that can pass the ball a little bit in Portland's offense. And then his fourth positive might seem a little weird, but his attitude is good for the locker room. He's a dude that came in and has embraced Portland so far, seems happy in Portland. And uh, given the issues that this organization in this locker room seemingly had at the start of last season having a guy that'll come in play hard play defense make the right pass and has a positive attitude that can't go understated but 
let's take a look at some negatives. First negative is his three-point shooting. On the season, he shot 23% from three. That includes his time with the Clippers. In Portland, he shot 27% from three. And in Portland, he was shooting three and a half three-point attempts per game in 27 minutes per game. So he was shooting quite a bit of threes that was as high as any three-point volume he's pretty much had in, in his entire career. And he still wasn't knocking down threes. So that absolutely has to be a negative. I think it might be a little bit too late for him to retool his shot but his form definitely doesn't lend to making three-point shots consistently at the NBA level. He had a couple years in Miami in 2017 through 2019 where he shot the three-point ball well. He shot 38% one season and then 37.5% the next season and that was on almost four attempts per game. So we have seen a flash of him being able to shoot the three-point ball before but the past three seasons he has not shot above 23% from three. It's a small sample size given his injury in Miami and then he went to Memphis and didn't play much there. He played more this season but it still wasn't a better story so his three-point shooting is definitely a negative. The second negative for Justice Winslow is his finishing. I wish Justice Winslow was a better finisher but he has not been a good finisher throughout his NBA career. For his career, he shoots 57% from 0 to 3 feet. That was better last year at 68% from 0 to 3 feet, but it's a smaller sample size, and it's something that worries me going forward. And when he gets outside of 3 feet, it's a struggle. So I also have mid-range on here. The finishing and mid-range, is kind. it kind of goes together. I don't know what 3 to 10 feet counts as. Is that finishing around the rim? Is that a mid-range shot? I don't know. But Justice Winslow in a Blazer uniform shot 18% of his shots from 3 to 10 feet and he only shot 28.6 percent on them from 10 to 16 feet he shot six percent of his shots he shot 14 percent from there and then from 16 feet to the three-point line he shot almost 10 percent of his shots from there and he shot 27 percent on them so once justice winslow gets outside of three feet he doesn't make shots and it's definitely a problem and the fourth negative is his off ball roll because not being able to space the floor not being able to hit shots outside of three feet at a consistent level makes it harder to play him next two star players like a Damian Lillard, like an Anthony Simons, because he doesn't space the floor. He's a guy that has to cut and move off the ball in order to keep defenses honest when those guys drive, but if you have a guard driving to the rim, you don't necessarily want to cut into their space. It, it sucks that he can't space the floor because he would be a phenomenal role player if he could just play off the ball better, but his off-ball role has always been questionable, and it's why he's bounced around a little bit the last couple of years. It's just hard to fit him into the offense with his shooting struggles. As far as what's next for Justice Winslow, it sounds like he's going to be a part of the organization next year. Joe Cronin speaks very highly of him, and I think that Chauncey Billups likes him as well just because he embraces what Chauncey wants in a player. However, Portland should not be hesitant to trade him this summer if his $4 million of salary is needed to match incoming salary in a trade. He's a solid defender, solid passer, plays the right way, but he can't shoot. He's just a role player at best best, an eighth, ninth man at best on a good team, and those guys aren't too hard to replace, so if you can go out there and get a better asset than him, and you can use his salary to match that salary, maybe you don't have to use the $6.5 million Robert Covington traded player exception to bring on a four to six million dollar contract because you use Justice Winslow to match you should absolutely be willing to trade Justice Winslow but I think he's going to be a part of the team next year I don't think they're going to trade him I have an inkling that he's going to be a part of the rotation but I don't want to go into next season planning on him being a part of rotation unless he's just a holdover for Joe Ingles to come back and take his role I'm fine with him getting spot minutes but I think people started to overrate him a little bit after that four game winning streak that four game winning streak, as I've said in a previous player review, I think it was a little bit fluky. And as we saw based on his numbers in Portland, it's not like he shot the ball any better. With Nasir Little, a possible top six or seven pick, as well as most likely Jeremy Grant as forwards in the rotation next year, in that scenario, you will have a lot of forward minutes locked up. And then if you bring back Joe Ingles, if you want to play Trenton Watford at some four, or if you bring in another guy, maybe a mid level exception guy, I just don't see how Justice Winslow gets minutes on that team. It's going to be really interesting to see how many minutes Justice Winslow is going to get on this team from the get-go next year 
considering how highly Joe Cronin and company speak of him. As far as Justice Winslow's grade for Portland this season, I give it a B minus. Statistically, it wasn't any more impressive during his career, but he helped the team win some games. He played the right way, and his attitude in Portland is definitely a good thing to have. This is about as high as I can go for him, considering he did not shoot the ball well. Every other area of his game other than making shots was probably a positive, though. Anyway, that wraps up this player review. Tomorrow, I will have a different type of video for you guys. Hopefully, you're looking forward to that. And then the next day, I will have maybe the funnest player review to do. As I said, if you've missed any player reviews, check out the playlist link at the top of the description box below. And with that being said, I'm out of here. Until next time, as always, peace out. Go Blazers!